New tips and secrets for keeping and breeding Sulawesi shrimp in 2024. In 2024, I've tried a few new things with keeping and breeding Sulawesi shrimp. While being successful, I'd like to share these tips and secrets with you. Hey there, Ray here, your go-to guy for all things aquatic on RKW Aquarium pages. Whether you're a loyal subscriber swimming back for more, or a brand new friend just diving into our underwater world, a warm welcome to you. Get ready to join me on an exciting journey through the lush aquascapes of planted aquariums, the bustling life of shrimp tanks, and every watery wonder in between. We're about to dive deep into the aquatic adventure together. I've been successfully keeping and breeding Silhouette shrimp on and off since around 2006, so over 25 plus years. I'm always trying to tweak little things to make the colony more successful. Although you might say tweaking the aquarium is the opposite of stability. Something to think about as stability for shrimp tanks is the ultimate key. Let's kick things off by starting with the secret weapon number one, Seacam's Lake Tanganyika salts. This salt helps raise the pH up to different levels depending on how much you dose and the dash can keep the pH to around 8.4. I find this very helpful in stabilizing the pH for auto top-offs and water changes. It doesn't affect the TDS too much and a dash in a 1 gallon is about 10 parts per million increase. Very minimal. For auto top-off water, in theory you're supposed to be using RODI water which has a base of 0. When water evaporates from the Silhouette Aquarium, you're supposed to top off with RODI water. I've noticed a few things. My RODI water comes in at about pH of around 7, which is a little bit lower than I would like. I watched another YouTube channel and I'm currently using a dash of Lake Tanganyika Remineralizer salts just to boost the pH up to 8.4, which in my opinion is a more ideal pH range for most Silhouette shrimp, especially the harder to keep ones like the Harlequins. I made another video on the importance of pH in shrimp keeping, specifically for Caradina shrimp, being crystal, and also Silhouette Caradina shrimp. I've mentioned many times I like using Salty Shrimp Silhouette Mix 8.5 over the 7.5, especially with the harder to keep types. I don't even use CO2 to dissolve it, I just mix it with warm water, and although it's not fully dissolved, the solution is cloudy, I'll add a dash of Lake Tanganyika salts in the newly mixed water, and then I drip it back into my Silhouette Aquarium. Alternatively, you can even use Salty Shrimp Silhouette 7.5 for the right GH and KH mix, and then add a dash of Seachem's Lake Tanganyika salts to raise the pH, and this is an easier way than dissolving the Silhouette Shrimp 8.5. Another tip or secret is to promote algae growth on the glass. I switched over to T5HO lights and I found that green dust algae on the glass wall grows much faster and better with T5HO light. I've read and experienced that especially with plants, they do better in T5HO lights versus LED lights. Although LED lights are much more technological advanced, something, there's something about the T5HO lights. Some reef tank keepers add T5HO lights to advance their fancy LED setup to promote coral growth. So think about this for a little bit. I've done quite a bit of research about Silhouette shrimp and their natural habitats and noticed that it does get cooler in the nights. A recent conversation with a local pro Silhouette breeder, Wayne, he, just, he suggested that he keeps his tank at 23 degrees Celsius, which is 73 degrees Fahrenheit, instead of the normal 28 degrees Celsius or 83 degrees Fahrenheit. So I took the temperature down a few notches in my tanks to 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's working quite well in my current colony. I have tons of baby Sulawesi white sock shrimps within two months of introducing them into the aquarium. 
My theory to this madness is lowering the temperature, the water has more oxygen than the warmer waters, so there's no need for oxidator devices in the temperature range. So far, so good. The next tip is locally bred Sulawesi shrimp. I've tried wild caught Sulawesi shrimp and locally bred shrimp, and my latest colony are locally bred Sulawesi shrimp and they're doing amazing. So I always recommend locally home bred shrimp if possible over wild caught or imports. The next tip, I'll go into detail later in another video, but it's using a thin layer of substrate opposite to my previous videos. This allows uneaten food to be removed easier and not trapped in the substrate, making it have ammonia buildup and causing it to be toxic for the Sulawesi shrimp. In addition to this tip, regular siphoning of shrimp poop I find makes it the tank cleaner and the shrimp seem more active in my opinion when the substrate is cleaner. Give it a try with an airline tube. These are a few things I've been doing differently with my Sulawesi shrimp with great success. Do you keep and breed Sulawesi shrimp? Do you have any tips or secrets that you want to share with the others and the community? Let's discuss. I'd like to hear your experience, and it's great to learn from each other. I absolutely love sharing my experiences, success and fears with everyone. It's just so exciting to document my journey in planted shrimp tanks and to share it with others. Stay tuned for more informative videos, as I've got plenty of content in store for you. Thanks for watching and listening to my rambles. I really appreciate it. Have an awesome day and happy shrimp keeping.